What's up, YouTubers? This is Jay Dreamers, and I'm going to be talking with you about the future. And what does the future hold for us? Now, I realize that those of you who watch my channel fall into various age groups. So I want you to consider your age group when I discuss this particular topic. I watched uh, a couple videos lately that really have sparked my mind into thinking about what the future holds for us. Let me bring you closer here. <laughs> One of the, I'm going to post links to both videos. The first video is about something called CRISPR, C-R-I-S-P-R, and it seems like this is basically a commercial for genetic engineering on a very advanced scale. And I was I was watching one of Rob Skiba's videos right now about uh, Nephilim and and giants and things like that. And he reposted this video that I actually one of you left a comment with this this video in uh in it I forgot who left it but thank you and Rob Skiba put it in his presentation and it it really started to just dawn on me like man I want to talk about this so watch the video for this CRISPR commercial or advertisement for the future of genetic engineering and what it basically talks about is in the near future, humans will be genetically modified on purpose and for a purpose, and certain traits, qualities that they have will be predetermined by laboratory workers and, and parents that basically select the type of being or child that they want to have and essentially there seems to be low, no limitation to this um, and it starts off with the mixing of genes from animals and humans together now this has been happening and this has happened a long time ago thousands of years ago uh, the, the genes of animals and people were mixed together in the past. And um, there's a lot of stuff on YouTube about that. Lots of stuff on the internet, period, about that. Um, it's, in, it's in every religious text. You know, not every religious text, but it's in all the religions. It's, it's in all the ancient history. And... Uh, <laughs> As mud, mud fossils would say, like this, this stuff is this stuff is accepted. It's 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 been proven, no big deal. So, anyways, um, yes, the mixing of animals and people, so that people can get super human abilities, like the ears of a dog, so that you can hear things on a level that dogs can hear, or the sight of a hawk, or what have you. Now there, I, I foresee complications and problems with this being that once you start grafting in the DNA of certain animals, you might get superhuman hearing or whatever, but you also might start getting some other side effects that you were not hoping for. And they may take some time to show up. But here's the other thing. If humans are genetically modified and mixed with animals, on purpose, like be, before, con before even like they're conceived, um, and these traits are predetermined. Then, um, where does that where does that take us? That that takes us into a blending of quote unquote species. Now. Let me tell you something. I'm not a species, okay? So don't throw me in there as being 
you know, a part of a certain species or what have you. I'm not a species. I'm something far above and beyond a species or a classification or throwing me into some kind of box. Now, once you make a genetically modified baby and it grows up into an adult and it breeds or has babies of its own, that DNA is now being passed down without any help from doctors. And that DNA can sort of freestyle and do whatever it wants to do as it passes down the family tree. So it's kind of out of the hands of the doctors at that point. If you've never seen it, I'd highly recommend checking out a movie called Gattaca. That's what it reminds me of. And basically in the future, there's a whole different type of profiling going on or judge, judgmental attitudes. And that is those who are genetically pure because they have been modified at birth and those who are genetically unstable or unknown which are the natural born people with no genetic modifications and they just roll the dice and risk whatever life throws at them I see that as a strong possibility if uh, the genetic engineering that's in hiding right now becomes a public phenomenon and practice. So the other the other uh, link is about quantum computers and they have if you don't know what a quantum computer is like it's a super computer. These are computers that make calculations that are almost unfathomable to you and I. They think faster than our brains can think. Robots are getting smarter than the people who made them. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, robots are slowly beginning to take over our way of life. And it's this frog in a frog. I always want to say frog in a blender. It's this frog in a pot effect once again it's it's a slow introduction it's small things at first and they get bigger and bigger and bigger when I go to Walmart which I can't stand I don't like Walmart or many other grocery stores I don't like many places but see I'm starting to get old-fashioned already I'm I'm 37 I'm starting to get old-fashioned and um, I can see myself 30 years from now as an eccentric old man that people just think that guy's strange you know uh, that's a weird old, old weird old man but anyway so I go to Walmart and there there's 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 more robot cashiers than there are people cashiers and um, robots are out so they're they're replacing people in so many ways and these quantum computers can can basically they can make it so that robots of the future can do anything they're capable of anything and they can absolutely replace human beings on in, on on almost any level now combine a quantum computer with some of those robots that do uh 3D printing I mean, imagine the possibilities of things that robots can do once we become obsolete. And this is right around the corner. Robots taking over our world, what they call transhumanism or uh, androids, which is humans mixed with robots, combining them together. And then... Uh, the combining DNA from animals and humans to make crossbreeds of animal humans. Um, so anyways, I, I said keep in mind your ages because for me, 30 years from now, not too bad. 40 and 50 years from now, 
that's getting towards pretty old, all right? And um, this is this is if nothing huge happens or stuff hits the fan or whatever. Um, which I'll probably be gone by then if you've seen my other videos. However, for those of you who are left behind, um, especially especially you young you youngins, you kids out there, please. Please start thinking about this stuff and please start talking about it after you have done some research. Share this information and talk about the implications that it has on future life. I mean, we genetically modify corn and all this stuff and that gets into our body and that starts to change us slowly. But they're talking about directly manipulating human beings to do things. And... What they use to justify this is, you know, like, well, we'll cure AIDS, and which they already have the cure for. We'll cure cancer, and you know what I mean? Like, uh, we'll, the big one is we will prevent death. Maybe not prevent it, but we will extend your lives for a very long amount of time. Well, that's interesting because in the Bible it says that um, Jesus says like the end will come and it will be like in the days of Noah. Well in the days of Noah men were living for hundreds of years. There was crossbreeding going on. There was magic, dark magic being used. There was animal human hybrids. <sighs> that world is right around the corner. I mean we have those things now but most of them are kept just under our view and I promise you soon enough they will start revealing little by little and they'll entice you. They'll try to entice all of us into wanting and desiring these things without questioning the implication, without questioning what it could lead to, if it's a good idea or not. Because um, people will be so eager. It's it, It'll be like, you know... Um, when they bring out a new technology but they put it in the form of a video game or something and people want it and want it and they use it and they use it like that Pokemon game it's it's basically got us doing the work of the robots to map out our locations where we live where we eat where we work where we are where other things are taking pictures of everything um so yeah I'm 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 already I'm I'm already old-fashioned who knows how long YouTube's even going to be up. But if it's up 40 years from now and you're watching this, then you see an, a younger version of an old man right now who's talking to you about your present condition. I remember old people talking about this used to be fields as far as the eye can see. Because buildings are popping up everywhere. And then the crazy thing is, 20 years later, I saw the same thing myself. Well, what are we going to be talking about as the future elders of the world? What kind of a world will we see? Will we live in? Will we adapt so that we don't even remember that there's much of a change? Will we go along with it? Or will we stand firm in, in this old-fashioned way of life? And the changes will be crazy to us, ridiculous to us. I mean, this is really starting to become the future. And these videos, this is all stuff that they're just letting you see. Everyone knows that they always hide stuff and they don't release technology and stuff until, you know, 40, 50 years later. Once they've exhausted it, now they can use it to their advantage to put it out into the public's view after they've packaged it in a nice, pretty, enticing wrapper. And, 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 and if you look up supercomputers, all of the world's fastest computers today are like the size of huge rooms, just like they used to be. Well, those old supercomputers of yesteryear are now small. So imagine what these supercomputers, these quantum computers today, how small they're going to eventually get and what they'll be able to do. Just some food for thought.